everyone, I'm Sofia Haidiris and today alongside with my team members Pierre Mazolia, Pierre Pesja, Alexandre Eschemann and Sherbar Seliman we will present about Aston Martin Lagonda. So this is our presentation overview. We will start by introducing the company with the background, some facts and the financial analysis. We'll continue with the product analysis and analysis of internal environment. We will introduce the target market profile. We will say how the company is involved internationally. And then we'll continue with analysis of external environment, global readiness. We will talk about the mode of entry, which one we chose and why. And we will finish with some conclusions and recommendations. About the company background, Aston Martin is a British independent manufacturer of luxury sports car and gun tours. Founded in uh, 1913 by Lionel Martin and Robert Bamford. The headquarters are located in, and main production site are located in Gaydon, in the county of Warwickshire, in UK. Aston Martin Lagonda is one of the world's most iconic and leading luxury groups with over 100 years of history in the car industry. They are providing three different types of vehicles, including <coughs> luxury sports cars, sports and supercars, and crossover GT. Finally, the sports cars are regarded as a British cultural icon. So talking about the financial analysis of Aston Martin, as we all know that Aston Martin has been struggling with their profits since the beginning. So for in 2015, their profit was minus 107 million and it went down further to minus 147 million in 2016. But as their sales increased up to 47% in 2017, their profit increased up to 76 million. So if we talk about uh, the product type analysis, uh, we can see that there is uh, five different uh, mold uh, models and three different vehicles in the range that we choose, which is uh, the luxury sports car. So um, here the last one is a unique prototype but based on the same uh, kind of model. Uh, talking about the price, so it's reflecting the positioning of uh, Aston Martin and uh, as well the, the quality and uh, high-end products. So now we talk about the SWOT analysis. Um, to start with the strength, uh, the first one is obviously that Aston Martin is a world-known uh, company as they are available in 53 different countries thanks to an effective distribution network. They, they sell the products uh, through more than 160 different dealers which allow them to uh, reach a geographically diversified key markets. The second one is above all that they have a rich historical heritage. Uh, Aston Martin has since grown uh, to become an international admired, admired luxury brand uh, with a unique design, a powerful engine and an outstanding brand image. Uh, about the image, uh, the brand is, uh, is often associated with the movie James Bond. Uh, they also have ultimate luxury and comfort um, uh, through their products and services. Uh, they offer many access accessories or options for the customers so that they can create their final product which will fulfill all their needs. Uh, finally, they have a strong marketing and branding through advertising uh, on TV or billboards in the streets. They also sponsor uh, various events uh, such as the 24 Heures du Mans in France. Uh, the British firm is also winning many awards uh, every year. Uh, the last one uh, being in uh, 2018, they won the Luxury Brand of the Year, which enhanced at the same time their brand awareness. Uh, now about the weaknesses, uh, the first one is that comparatively, they have a lesser market penetration. Uh, for instance, in Europe, they own only 10% of market share in the high luxury car industry, 6% uh, in China and 9% in America. They also have a very limited product portfolio as Aston Martin uh, cars. Uh, they only have four models uh, with five different vehicles. And the last one is that they have a very low production capacity with only 3,000 employees uh, in the main production site located in Gaydon. In comparison, Porsche, they can count on 10 times more uh, workforce. And moving on with the opportunities, we said budget automobiles, and that's because uh, Aston Martin has many followers, but not every single one of the general public can experience it. And uh, the, a way to improve that is Aston Martin to produce um, mid-range products, more affordable for everyone. 
said expansion of their availability. They are um, available in many countries, but some of them are hard to get to. So Aston Martin has to work on the expansions and maybe to advertise it locally. Uh, they live in automobiles, and that's because Aston Martin is uh, introducing just luxury cars, which some of them are not easy to use them every single day. And increasing the availability of repairing, because we say for a consumer, which is internationally for Aston Martin, it's hard to find that uh, quick service. Uh, sometimes it may take months to repair. Moving on to grades, uh, we said increase of fuel costs because the prices are increasing and maybe Aston Martin has to start thinking about providing uh, electric cars. And the huge competition because like uh, Jaguar or Bentley or Porsche uh, are the big competitors and Aston Martin has to work more in order to stand out and be more innovative. By looking at the SWOT analysis of Aston Martin, our group has come up with different strategies, starting off with the weakness and threat uh, strategy. Aston Martin should uh, take advantage of their low penetration and should penetrate more in future markets, like they are now targeting female buyers uh, for their products. For their weakness and opportunity strategy, they can minimize their weakness by introducing more innovative products like they're currently doing, they're introducing an electric car. Moving on to strength and threat strategy, as Aston Martin is a heritage brand and it is a very well-known brand with a very good brand identity, they should use their reputation to attract potential buyers in multiple countries. For their strengths and opportunity strategy, they should take advantage of their identity and heritage to compete with the huge competition internationally and domestically. So now about the target market. Uh, the end user of the product image we globally have would be a male gender aged between 32 and 50, 54 years old uh, with a very high living standards with around 200,000 uh, pounds of income a year. Um, so people interested in distinctiveness, uh, freedom and extravagance for instance. So, to put it into a nutshell, the target profile would be innovators, achievers, and uh, strivers. About the global overview of the firm, so as you can see with this map, uh, Aston Martin is a global brand. Thanks to an effective dealer network, they are now available in uh, 167 different locations in 52 countries, including Brazil, Russia, China, France, Spain, and uh, South Africa, for example. About the analysis of the external environment. So, uh, for the threat of new entrants, we define it as low because uh, the car industry is a highly competitive market with many brands already available, and the cost uh, of launching a uh, car manufacturing is are really like high. The threat of substitutes are high in our case because of the alternative fuel and mode of transportation, but also about the electric and hybrid cars, which are getting really popular among customer and Tesla, for example. The government promotes this new type of cars, as well in France and in Colombia. For the determinants of buyer power, we define it as medium because uh, the global luxury car market is currently growing and we saw a uh, grow by 40% 40 in 2018. And for the determinants of superior power, uh, we define it as medium because the Aston Martin cars are only produced in the UK uh, in Gaydon and the main um, supplier for the engine is Mercedes. Finally, we find the competitive rivalry has high in the car industry. Let's talk right now about global readiness. Uh, so it's really useful for a company that wants to internationalize in order to have the best uh, entry mode in the market. So to do so, we convert the actual uh, entry strategy of the company uh, with the global readiness. And the, if there is uh, some difference uh, between uh, the two, uh, the company might uh, put into action some, yeah, some action in order to correct that strategy. Uh, for Aston Martin, so our global readiness uh, is uh, 79% or 85, uh, 87 over uh, a score of 110. 
So depending the results of this analysis, the company could uh, not be ready to export, uh, might only do uh, e-commerce or uh, direct export. But uh, in our case, uh, Aston Martin uh, with the, this high score is ready to develop uh, a foreign marketing presence. Moving on to the method of uh, international involvement. So uh, the method uh, is different uh, depending the, the company, so depending the strategy, the brand personality and the resources of the company. Uh, in the luxury automotive market, uh, we can see that Aston Martin and Ferrari have uh, quite the same strategy, which is to have uh, direct exporting and uh, overseas uh, marketing subsidiary. Uh, for uh, Lamborghini, for example, uh, it's more about uh, having company-owned uh, retail store and uh, a brand like Maserati, for instance, uh, is importing uh, more components and uh, it's more about uh, having uh, several uh, foreign retailer acquisition on the market. So, as Kira said before, we chose a foreign marketing presence and more specific a company on retail store. We said that this is the best suggestion for Aston Martin uh, because it will grow slowly and soon in the uh, optimal conditions for the business. Uh, there will not be waste of time for training or developing materials. And because it will be like uh, no retail store, they will enjoy all the profits and they will maintain the control on every single uh, aspect of the business. Concluding our presentation, as we all know that Aston Martin is a worldwide uh, company th thanks to its worldwide all-around presence and it has a very good reputation built on the quality of the products but unfortunately Aston Martin has a narrow range of products and limited manufacturing capacity because it only employs 3000 employees for their main production site but they have realized their weakness and now they are going to apply, uh, employ 1,000 more employees on their main production site. So we are going to finish with uh, some recommendations. Um, so according to the recent very positive uh, financial growth of the firm, uh, Aston Martin should keep investing into their offering in order to increase their product portfolio. Uh, for instance, uh, hybrid and electric cars uh, seems to be a very promising market. Uh, furthermore, Aston Martin wants to reduce their lack of uh, SUV models uh, by coming up with hybrid um, supercars and SUV under the brand of Aston Martin, but also with full electric uh, SUV under the, the heritage of uh, Lagonda brand. Um, another uh, recommendation would be that uh, the ma manufacturing capability should also be improved um, by developing the original production site in Gaiden, in UK. Uh, first of all, because uh, the, the, the image of the brand is uh, directly uh, related to the UK, but also because it's still the, the market in which they have the highest uh, market share of 20%. And finally, the British car manufacturer should also develop the after-sales services um, to remain with the same quality from the product delivery to the end uh, use of the Aston Martin experience. So that's it about the presentation. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>